All right, the sermon this morning, actually the title of my sermon this morning comes from verse number 15 in Galatians 5, where we just read, where the Bible says, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. And I just want to preach on biting and devouring this morning. And there's a reason, you know, there's a lot of reasons to preach this sermon. And, um, but of course, most recently, you, you continue to see things on social media and people get blasted all the time. And, and I don't, you know, I don't like it at all. I don't like seeing it. I'm glad that our church pretty much stays off and out of those, uh, out of the drama and the nonsense. Now, look, I'm not saying that all drama is bad. If we have a fight going on, that's, that's a righteous battle, a righteous fight and things going on, we're going to fight, right? But one thing that has a tendency to happen, I think, just in general, in, in on fire, fiery Baptist churches, is, you know, when you get used to, to being in a battle, you got to be careful not to, to do, you know, turn around and start fighting amongst your brethren, right? And start biting and devouring each other. Uh, that's where things get real bad. Another issue comes up with oftentimes with younger believers that, that are new to hearing the concepts taught of, you know, the reprobate doctrine and things like that. We, we preach that here, and I preach that relatively frequently just because it's something that hasn't been taught in a while and the schemes have gone by the wayside as far as just churches in general and their doctrinal teaching. And it's important to understand, we see plenty of scriptures where the Apostle Paul is saying, you know, I cease not to warn you day and night with tears and the warnings about the sheep's and wolves' clothing and warnings about false brethren coming in unawares and these things. And we need to have that understanding and we need to have that warning and we need to know that there's bad people out there. But at the same time, how do you deal with that? It's not just turning everything into a witch hunt and just being really suspicious of every single person in the church thinking like, oh man, which is, you know, Oh, what, wait, what did you say? Wait, what did you post? Wait, what did you like? And just, and it's like people get on a hair trigger to then try to identify and uncover who's the next reprobate, who's the person, who's that, you know. Look, we need to understand that they exist, but we cannot, we cannot live our lives just trying to uncover who's the next reprobate. Amen. Amen. Who is that? Who's the next bad person? I don't know. We're going to do, but here's the thing. The reason why we teach on that is so that you can have the proper, you know, precautions just put in, in place for yourself to protect you and your family so that you're not just letting your kids just go off and you're not just, you know, allowing way too much to happen thinking that everyone is just great and you're, you're opening up a door for things to happen. We teach on it for that reason for you to be protected. It's not to just start questioning, man, what is, you know, all right, who's here, you know, and here's the other thing too. We don't demand unwavering, unfaltering loyalty to every single thing that comes across this pulpit. If, you, if you're not in lockstep with absolutely every single thing that I say, oh man, you're just, I mean, you're with the devil. You're, you know, like, that's ridiculous. Now the church ought to be in unity and the church ought to be like a big family. And just like in any family, you're gonna, you can have some disagreements and, and some problems. And again, and tonight, actually, this is kind of like a two-part sermon. I'm going to be dealing with just how do you deal with personal conflicts within church? Just dealing with conflicts. That, I'm going to go over that more tonight. They're kind of related, but this morning I want to focus just more on the biting and devouring and the proper spirit that we have because it's easy to get the wrong spirit. One of the things that, uh, and I, I meant to get this reference before we started, I can't remember where it is off the top of my head right now, but when, um, when the disciples were, were seeking a place to stay and they, and they weren't allowed in one area, they asked Jesus and said, hey, Lord, should we pray that fire come down and consume them? And Jesus is like, you know not what spirit you are of. Right? We're, not, we're not here to destroy. We're not just on this hair. They're like, oh man, you're not going to receive us? Well, God, just rain fire on them then. You know, that, that's not the attitude that we ought to have. But, you know, even Jesus' disciples, you know, kind of fell into that, having that type of an attitude and mindset. Again, you can get caught up in the battles and the fights and everything else, but we need to be careful that we maintain the proper spirit that's being taught 
in Scripture. We don't waver. We don't waver on doctrine. You know, we, we understand the teaching. We know that there's bad people on there. And for the bad people, they deserve, you know, the utmost punishment that, that the Bible dictates. And we're not going to back down from, from that and from that teaching. But at the same time, we need to understand that we are supposed to be in unity here. And, you know, I, I want to make one more point before I get too far into this as well is that I don't think, from my observation, my standpoint, that there's any problem within any of the churches specifically that are like-minded with our church. I have visited and been to almost all of the churches, and they all have a good, right spirit. But what happens is that there's maybe one or two people online or a few other people that, are, that don't even attend the church. Or maybe, you know, some may or may not attend the church. But you've got some loud mouths that, that put a really bad image on all of the churches in what I consider to be our movement in the new independent fundamental Baptist movement because of how vocal they are and how stupid they are online with, with the railing and the biting and the devouring. And I want to preach this for a couple of reasons. One is to make sure that no one here would get sucked into that and start following a bad example or a bad lead going after and attacking brothers and sisters in Christ where it's not warranted and it's not right and it's not acceptable. And two, just to exp you know, explain what is appropriate and what's not appropriate and what spirit we ought to have. I mean, this is just a, a good sermon to have and, and to understand where we're at. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Satan is the one who's going around trying to devour Christians. Okay, we ought not to be jumping on Satan's side and devouring Christians ourselves. That's not our job. And we're going to get in a little bit later. I'm going to talk about marking and avoiding people and things like that because we need to understand that. But again, those are going to be more of the exceptions to the rule when, it, when, when those situations arise. This isn't something that should just be a continual thing just all the time where Evan, we're, 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 you know, oh, this person's bad, that person's bad, this person's bad. That, you know, it's like, come on. We can have disagreements and still have and, and and how do we deal with that we're going to deal with a little bit of that more tonight let's go back to galatians 5 here where we started there's so much in this pat this one passage that's going to instruct us and help us to have the right mind verse number 13 the bible says for brethren ye have been called unto liberty only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another so right off the bat what's the, what's the attitude i'd have one of service one to another Right? Service within the church. Ministry. Our church is a ministry. We're here to help other people. When you come to our church, hopefully you have a mindset that is not, gimme, 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 do for me, church. What can you do for me? It's, how can I help? How can I be a blessing? Who can I help? What can I do? I'm here to serve. That's what this church is all about. It's a service to other people. Now, if you come in here and you have needs, we want to help you. We want to help you with your problems. We want to help you if there's something that this church can help you with. Amen. We'd love to do that. We're here for you. But everybody's individual mindset ought to be, well, what can I do to help other people? I want to help the people that have problems coming into church. I want to have that mind of love serving one another. That's the attitude that we ought to maintain and, may and keep as the main focus. Not, who can I uncover? Who can I get dirt about? Who can I expose? Who can I spend all my waking time following and seeing what they're doing? And if they're not doing something that lines up with what I think they should be doing, then I'm going to report them to the authorities and I'm going to publicly post it and, you know, whatever. Okay, that is not the right spirit. Verse number 14, for all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do you want people looking over your shoulder and looking at every single thing that you do and like, and you know, like, do you want someone scrutinizing every action that you make? If you don't like that, then how about you don't do that to other people either? Verse 15, but if ye debite and devour one another, he says, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. When you start striving and fighting and biting and devouring, What's that going to lead to? You're just going to devour each other. 
It's not going to be good for anybody. You start tearing people down and biting and devouring. And, and you're left with just being consumed. Verse number 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Meaning that the biting and devouring, that's not of the spirit. That's not of the spirit. You start biting and devouring people, biting and devouring one another within the church, brethren. Hey, instead of doing that, how about you walk in the spirit? Verse number 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And it's going to list off a lot of things. I want to point out a couple and spe specifically, you know, for example, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Those are all lusts of the flesh, works of the flesh. Verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Look, hatred, wrath, strife. These are all things that are, that are associated with the flesh. Along with everything else here, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such likes, of the which I tell you before, as I've told you, also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And this is contrasted with the fruit of the Spirit. Right? So if you're walking in the... He's got done saying, if you walk in the Spirit, you're not going to fill the lust of the flesh. And he told us the works of the flesh, and some of those are hatred, wrath, and strife. Right? Just fighting and hating and biting and devouring. But if you have the fruit of the Spirit, it means you're walking in the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is going to bring forth love, joy, peace, right? Long suffering. Long suffering means you allow things to happen without just jumping to biting and devouring. Let's face it, you know what? We're, we're all a whole group of imperfect people here. Nobody here is perfect. We all have our flaws. We all have our sins. We all have our problems. And if you're going to start nitpicking at people, well, guess what? You're going to find a cause of fault in everybody here. And should we have that attitude that just says, oh, man, you, I, you're doing this or you're doing that? You know, get out of my sight. Well, okay, be careful because with what judgment you judge, you're going to be judged. And you know, the people on Facebook that just love to just, just every single time someone does something they don't like, they better beware and take heed and watch out. On social media, whatever social media people are using, I mean, whatever. It happens. It's out there. People get super holy and super self-righteous and start tearing down other people. And oftentimes, without even knowing all of the details, all the facts, the whole story, they just want to spout off their own opinion. And you know what? People don't care about your opinion. Yeah, right. And oftentimes, what you end up doing is just making yourself look like an ass. Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. That's what you end up doing especially when you don't know what you're talking about and you just want to throw things out there. Oh, man, well, I'm with... You know, and, and people have this attitude. I see it all the time. It's, it's really frustrating. And I, I think it's not very many people, but it's the I'm of Paul and I'm of Apollos and I'm of Cephas, you know, and I'm of Christ. Hey, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? There's a lot of people serving the Lord. There's a lot of people doing a good work. Okay, let's not, let's not worry about having to tear down everybody. It doesn't mean you have to be friends with everybody, but I'll tell you what, you know, let's not be biting and devouring one another because then there's going to be nothing left. And there are a lot of people from the outside looking in. And, you know, as far as strong old Baptist church is concerned, I don't want to have the, the label of having the bad spirit and attitude that's just out after everybody because nobody's good enough to serve the Lord like we serve the Lord. And if you just make one misstep, then watch out because you're going to be on blast. You're going to be on notice and we're going to make sure that, that everybody hates you. No, we're not going to have that here. Not at all. We're not going to be in the, in, the, in the business of biting and devouring one another. And like I said at the beginning, the churches that I know and I've been to are not like that. The churches are not. The churches have the right spirit. They have the right attitude. They do the right work. And I know not everyone here has even visited. You can get a false perception of what they're like when you go on the internet. 
You get a false perception when you hear maybe different clips of different preaching or whatever. You don't know what the church is actually like when you go in there. And the churches have been, the churches I've been a part of have been the best churches I've ever been to in my life. And some of the churches I've visited as, since I've become a pastor that are like-minded are some of the best churches in the world. And they have a right spirit. And they have a right heart. So it's not the churches that I'm attacking at all. There's individuals though, that are going out and making a lot of problems. And I think having a bad spirit and a bad attitude. And you need to take, take heed to that. Walk in the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Verse 26, let us not be desirous of vainglory. Let us not, you know, provoking one another, envying one another. We don't want to be out goading people, goading other believers and, and provoking them. Let's not do that. Let's not be desirous of vain glory so everyone can see how, how righteous you are and how spot on you are and lockstep you are. Turn if you would to 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, another great passage that shows the attitude that we ought to have as believers, as Christians in a church. First Peter chapter 3, verse number 8. The Bible reads, finally, be ye all of one mind. We should be in unity. We should be in unity. We should be in uni unity doctrinally, spiritually, you know, in our goal, in our mission, in this body, the body of Christ that we have here. We should be in unity. Be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. When you have compassion towards people, you're not trying to find all their faults. When you have compassion on people, even if they do a fault, even if they do a wrong, you're not going to be out just trying to, to stick them with it. Love as brethren. You need to remember that too. You know, ideally in your home, physically in the, in the home that you grew up in, ideally you had a loving family. And I'd like to say that most families do have a loving family. Now, there are, every family is screwed up at one, one, one point or another. But in general, the concept of having a family like, oh man, that's my brother. Don't mess with my brother. That's my sister. Don't mess with my sister. That's my mom. That's my dad, right? You have this bond. You have this closeness. That's how families ought to be. I realize not every single family or not every single person may have experienced that, but that's how families are. Your blood relatives, your flesh and blood relatives, you are close. And the Bible said here, you know, you need to love his brethren because spiritually we are all brethren. You need to be there. Hey, that's, you know, uh, you, you're my comrade, you're, you're, my, you're my worker, you're my brother, you're my sister, you're he, we're here together. Amen. Right? We're, in, we're part of this church family. Right. Don't go messing with my church members. Don't go messing, you know, that's the attitude that, that, that we ought to have is, and, and have that love one for another and care for each other as if you're flesh and, and blood. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Show some common respect for each other. Not rendering evil for evil. Someone did wrong. Someone did you wrong. You don't go and do them wrong. This is the Christian mindset. This is real basic stuff, and it's taught all throughout the Bible, but we need to remember this. Or railing for railing. There may be a point where someone in church rails on you, and it's not good, and it's not right. And they need to be rebuked for that. But you don't go and turn it into a railing for railing. But contrarywise, blessing. The Bible says not only, you know, not only should you not rail, you should, you should bless. Knowing that ye are there unto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. You get a blessing when you bless them. That's going to help keep the peace. That's going to help keep unity when you can have this type of a mindset. Verse number 10, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. 
watch what you say. And what you say applies broadly to what your fingers say when you key something in. Refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. We ought to be seeking peace, unity within our church. That's what we want to have. That's what we're striving for. And I think we have a great spirit here. Again, don't get me wrong. I just want to, I need to reiterate this and make sure that, that we have the right attitude and the right spirit and you don't get sucked into drama and nonsense and people do, you know, saying things and saying evil things that they ought not to speak. It's not right. Not right. Verse 12, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Those that do evil and do wrong, God will take care of that. We don't have to worry about that. Verse 13, And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But and if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. He's saying, look, you just keep doing good because who is it that's going to be able to harm you if you're following the Lord? Who can harm you? And if, and if they do end up uh, you know, harming you for doing right, for doing good, then you can be happy about that. Why? Because God's going to bless you for that. Because you earned rewards for that. Verse 15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as if evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. The right thing to do when people start slamming you, and this is how you can tell oftentimes who's more godly, when you have you know, a couple people doing a lot of railing and the person who's getting railed on, they don't do anything. They just keep doing what they, what, what, what's right. They keep doing what, what they believe in their heart is right and have that integrity and don't go railing for railing. And you know what? The person who's speaking evil of you, just let them be ashamed if they're falsely accusing you by your good deeds and good works. You just keep doing what's right. Because in, it doesn't always come out right away. Sometimes it just takes a while before people realize, oh, oops, oops, that really wasn't a bad person. Oops, maybe I shouldn't have said anything so hastily. Oops, maybe I shouldn't have just gotten caught up in emotion and, and just started spouting off my lips things I don't really know because I don't like what they did. The Bible says in Romans 16, turn if you would to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. The Bible says in Romans 16, 17, I, I, I just preached on this a week or two ago, marking and avoiding people, right? The Bible says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. This verse is really clear about who we mark and avoid. Now, you can also turn to 1 Corinthians 5. You can see people who are caught up in those sins, right? I haven't seen anybody guilty of any of the sins of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 that, that I've seen get railed on. I also haven't seen anybody causing divisions and offenses contrary to doctrine. I haven't seen that happen. People who, by good words and fair speeches, are deceiving the hearts of the simple regarding doctrine and causing division and causing problems. In the I, don't, I haven't seen that happen. This is, I mean, this is the context. This is what we're talking about. These are the people you mark and avoid. It's the people who, cause, like, they're causing problems on purpose within the church. And, and they're completely going against the good doctrine that is, that is held at a church and just trying to cause division. And they're, and they're enticing people and using fair words. It's kind of like a false prophet. Right? I mean, this is, these are the people who are saying, you know what, mark and avoid those people. They're causing problems. They're no good. They're trying to steer people away. They're trying to split the church. They're trying, you know. 
But does it say you mark and avoid, brethren, for political beliefs? Does it say you mark and avoid, brethren, for, for other things, other opinions, other issues, other things that might be going on in the world? Do we mark and avoid them? For, or how about this? They're doing something you consider that to be weak. Oh, man, you're weak or you're lame. So you just mark and avoid them? No. People can do things that may, you may consider to be weak or lame or whatever. And if they're your brother or sister in Christ, you still love them. And you still be there for them. And you don't put them on blast. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, actually when people do something you consider to be weak, look at verse number 14. The Bible says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. And I'll tell you this much, anyone who actually really cares about somebody and maybe thinks that a rebuke is necessary, you know how you do that? In person, on the phone, privately. If, you're, if you actually love a person, you care about them, you're not going to just, oh man, well they did it. You know what? Do you want to set them right? Do you actually really care about them? Do you think that they need repentance for something? Why don't you go and talk to them about it? Why do you have to air everything out online and, and air your grievances with people for the whole world to see? Especially if they didn't do that to you. Why are you doing that? Everyone has to decide, decide where you're going to draw the line on... on you know, how much is too much? When do we separate from people? Whatever. But the Bible gives us the answer on those things. I mean, in, in Romans 16, it says divisions about doctrine, causing divisions and problems. First Corinthians 5, it talks about specific sins like drunkenness and, and fornication and extortion and, you know, all of those covetousness. Okay, those are times where you break fellowship and you shun somebody. Last place I'd be turned, short sermon this morning, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Having a bad attitude and not being able to forgive people, even when they do do wrong, especially brethren, is one of Satan's devices. It's something that he uses against churches to harm churches. So you need to be aware of this, that this is, this is some of the tactics of the, of the devil. Try to pit people against one another. Try to cause factions. Try to say, oh man, I'm on this side, I'm on that side. You know, within a church, that's not good. Okay, it's not good. And when people aren't creating a faction within the church against somebody, you don't need to create something that doesn't already exist. Because by you doing that, that's going to cause more problems within your church. Because you're being the loud mouth. Because you're being the one that, that can't just, just love the brethren and, and show some mercy and long-suffering with people that you think may be wrong. And you know what? Maybe they're not wrong. Maybe they are. But either way, the, there's a proper way to behave and conduct yourself in the house of God. And I'll tell you this much, too, and that's why, I'm, I'm, again, another reason I'm really thankful that our church in general, does a, I think, does an excellent job. Now, I'm not the internet police by any means. And I don't get on social media very much at all just because it irritates me. Because I see things that I don't like. Because I see bad behavior and I don't like it. And I really don't want to have much to do with it. And I think it's a good tool. We use it. We try to reach people with it. But in general, I don't like it. And it causes more problems than it's worth. But remember that when you go to churches and you're, you know, you're a strong old Baptist church and everyone knows I'm strong, you kind of represent the church publicly when you're going out publicly and saying things. Yep, that's right. And it's just, a, I mean, it just is what it is. So always be careful with the things that you say that you're not misrepresenting our church and what we believe and what our spirit is here when you go online. Because I think it's very clear what the spirit is here. I've been teaching on this since we started. Because the, the spirit of our church is critical for the, the success of our church. Success in God's eyes. Success in reaching people. Success in doing what we're here to do. Success in having the, the humility of mind that Jesus Christ had 
that was able to suffer all kinds of things, all kinds of, of, of slanders, all kinds of, of, of heat and, and you know, punishment, and continuing to do the work to help others, to preach the gospel, to do what's right. That is the spirit that, we're, that we have here and that we're not going to lose. And we're not going to give in to, to infighting and bitterness and strife and wrath and any other work of the flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 6, the Bible reads, Sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many. And now he's referring back to someone who did wrong, they received of the wrong, it's all done, it's over, they're repentant. And he says, so that contrary wise, now in verse seven, ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him. Why? Because he's a brother in Christ. He did wrong and he suffered for it. He paid his dues, but now it's time to forgive and comfort him. Lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Hey, when the repentance is there, you forgive him. And you welcome him back. And when if they've done wrong to you, Forgive them, comfort them. It says, um, because otherwise they might be swallowed up with over much sorrow. Like it, it's, it's more now punishment than, than is warranted. And they just quit, give up. Because it's too much, too much to take. They need to have that forgiveness. You need to have that comfort for them. And that's what verse eight, it says, wherefore I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. He's like, I know you love him now. Now show me that you love him. You know, confirm it. Prove it. Prove your love towards him. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether you be obedient in all things. And he's saying, you know what? This is another reason why I wrote unto you, just to make sure, are you really obedient in all things? Are you really able to forgive him? Are you really able to comfort him and welcome him back into the fold? Are you really obedient in all things? You did a good job in, in maybe separating yourself and making sure that, that, Whatever needed to be done was done, but now are you, are you able to come full circle and allow him back in now that he's repentant, now that things have been done? I, do, you, are you, do you have that proper forgiveness and, and, and ability to comfort? Verse 10, to whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Forgiveness is important because otherwise Satan can get an advantage over you when you're not willing to be forgiving to people. Right. You're not willing to let some things go. When you're not willing to just say, fine, you know, otherwise Satan's going to use that and he's going to use that bitterness and he's going to use that division and try to drive a deeper wedge in between brethren. We're brethren. We got to work together. Amen. There's already a lack of laborers, of workers, of people who are willing to go out and do the work. The last thing we need is someone just, just coming up and trying to drive a wedge between the few workers that we have. Amen. We got too much to do to be worried about being at odds and, and strives with people and worried about it. And, and how about this? That definitely not within our church, but how about just worried about what else is, what other people are having fights and, you know, like, Look, I don't got time for that. We don't have time for that. And I don't need anybody looking at my shoulder and who am I hanging out with. And if I go and visit some other church of people who are preaching the gospel and have got, they're good on their doctrine and, and, you know, they're doing a work for the Lord. Whoever I go and visit, I don't need anyone. You know, oh, well, Pastor Burns, what are you doing here? What, you know, look, save it. All right? How about you show a little bit of grace and humility and if people want to serve the Lord and they're going to serve the Lord with somebody that's doing a work already, let them do the work. Leave them to their work. And if some people end up leaving because maybe a certain church may not be the best fit for them and they want to go somewhere else, let them go. You don't need to be railing on people on the way out and hating on people. Oh, they must never been saved. Look, let it go. 
And if anyone here feels like, you know what, this church isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be, or it's going a direction, I don't want to go, or whatever, you should, be fe you should feel free to be able to leave a church without being worried about repercussions against you because that's cult-like. You're worried about people destroying your name and character and your reputation, everything online, just because you decide to leave somewhere? That's cultish. Okay, that's weird. That's bad. And, and you know, you don't want to be considered like you're part of a cult, yet you're going you're gonna to rail on people that are leaving and not causing a disturbance and not causing a problem and not causing division? You got something wrong with you if that's, if that's the way that you behave. You're welcome to come and go in this church. And you don't have to worry about me just, oh man, this person, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get them, man. They thought they'd, they think that I'm wrong. Well, I'll show them. No. And look, I don't see any pastors doing this. So again, I'm not, I, don't, I don't want you to get the wrong impression of, of, of what's happening. I'm just saying, you know, that's a weird behavior to have. And no one ought to be acting like that towards your brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's keep the great unity that we have here. You know, we're going to work and do our work. And you know what? We're going to join up with different people. And I want to make friends with other churches that, are, that are, it, it have some basics of doctrine. I mean, if there's other Baptist churches out here that are King James only, that have the right gospel, and they're doing soul winning, or if they want to do soul winning, I want to help those people out if we can. I want to have an amicable relationship because you know what that means? It means their church probably has brothers and sisters in Christ. And we need more people to work together. Now, I'm not going to sacrifice and just become ecumenical of just, oh, well, we're all in this together. You know, look, we're looking for people who are saved and who already are holding to some good doctrine. Now, I don't care if they believe different on the reprobate doctrine. I don't care if they believe different on other doctrines. I don't care about that. I'm not going to slander them. I'm not going to criticize them. I'm not going to try to tear them down. We're going to try to help them out. I got contacted recently from a, from a pastor way down in South Georgia that was asking for a little bit of help because his daughter's having surgery up here in Atlanta. And you know what? We helped him out. We put, we're going to put him up this week in a, in a hotel so he can be with his daughter at the children's hospital up here. And hopefully that can open up another door. I don't know much about the church. Okay, but he was just looking for a little bit of help. He was looking for a place he could just stay the night and said, yeah, we'll help you out. They're an independent, fundamental Baptist church. They're a King James Bible preaching church. And I didn't see anything that says anything bad about them otherwise. But I'm not going to have to go dig and turn the world upside down to try to figure out every little thing about them. I want to be able to help people in need. And I want to be able to make some good relationships with people. And you know what? It, it'll, it'll work itself out real quick. If, you know, it's not going to be from us as much not wanting to associate with them. It's going to be other people not wanting to associate with us. That's usually where it's going to come. Okay, if you're doing what's right and you're preaching hard and you're doing all the, it, it usually works itself out. People separate from you. So I'm not worried about that. But it would be good to have good relations with, with as many churches as we can. Again, there's, 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 everyone's going to have their own opinion and, and point of where you draw the line on where you're not going to, to fellowship or whatever, but I, I want to I see as many people doing a good work for the Lord as possible. And we need to maintain a humble mind, a great spirit, a spirit of ministry and serving and loving one another and not biting and devouring. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us, Lord, help us never to forget the condition that, that we're in and, and the, the sin that, that we've had and the, and the judgment against that sin, Lord, and that you've paid that judgment and that you've done everything for us and all that you've endured. Lord, help us to be mindful of that so that we can have the proper long-suffering and mercy that we ought to have, especially for the brethren, Lord, especially for our brothers and sisters in Christ. 
We know that there's, you know, sometimes there may be rebukes necessary and, and people need to be corrected, God, but I pray that you would please help us to do so with a, with a humble mind and a spirit and out of love and not out of envy and not of bitterness and strife, dear Lord. Help us to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Help us to do many great works for you, dear God. I pray that you please continue to, to build our church and help us to reach more people. We love you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.